Robin Hood Radio presents Stage Right or Not with Michelle Willems. Michelle is a longtime journalist and herself is a published playwright of several theatrical works. She's a frequent contributor to the Huffington Post, Daily Beast, and the Atlantic websites. Well, this week I am reporting to you from Los Angeles, but it doesn't really matter, does it? We can stream from anywhere, anytime now, but it's nice to be in a new environment. In fact, the first show that I saw or participated in emanates from the Geffen Stay House, as it now calls itself, in West Los Angeles. It's called The Present, and the one-man magic-inspired piece has been selling out every single performance since it began in April, and it's pretty much sold out till October. Now, you pay for a ticket, though hardly New York-style prices, and only 25 audience members are invited per show. The star storyteller is Portuguese-born Helder Guimarães, who survived a quarantine childhood experience when he was 11. This 90-minute show combines his personal story of life with a beloved grandfather and, well, card tricks, a lot of card tricks. Lucky ticket holders are all sent a mystery package in advance, which are not opened. It's not open until showtime. I won't give more away, but Slate of Hand fans won't be disappointed in the interactive experience. Yes, you will likely be called on, as I was. And really, at this time, who can quibble? For many, the present is a true gift, even if it is, as its creator says, just an illusion. My hope for Hunch is that at some point this may be recorded for others to watch. Now, as for overall theater news since we last spoke, well, Broadway is now officially thinking 2021, spring in particular, God knows how many new shows could emerge, considering that some 30 have already been postponed. But word is that Dustin Hoffman will be returning to Broadway, first time in three decades, to star in yet another version of Thornton Wilder's Our Town. Now, the last one there had Paul Newman as the narrator, so that's a tough act to follow. In other casting and narrating, by the way, News, Oscar winner Lupita Nyong'o will do those duties in the audio-streamed Shakespeare in the Park production of Richard II, starting today through Thursday. It's a star-studded production. Richard will be portrayed by one of my favorites, Andre Holland, alongside Felicia Rashad, John Douglas Thompson, Estelle Parsons, and more. This will be heard on WYNC at 9 p.m. nightly. Now, there's a lot more to look for and watch this week. The Mitt Theatre Company is streaming one of its rediscovered productions, Women Without Men, through July 19th. This Irish piece takes place in the lounge of an all-girls school. I saw it several seasons back, and I recall enjoying it immensely. On Thursday at 8 p.m., check out what are called the Living Room Plays from the Eden Theatre Company, original Resonant, isolation, justice, inequality are just a few of the themes. Meanwhile, far across the ocean, London's Old Vic Theatre, which has been fighting for survival, is offering a recording of a play called Mood Music, starring the charismatically sleazy Ben Chaplin. It's free of charge on YouTube, but only for two more days. It's a beautifully staged production, six actors, no set per se, about a battle over a song. But of course, it's about much more. Gender, do you like women? As people, I mean. Psychological, making other people feel better doesn't really make me feel better. And legal issues are all here in this rather mesmerizing work. I have to say I watched it two straight days. Not to mention many witty observations about the business it talks about. His social cognition may be retarded. Very common in the music industry is one line I remember. The Old Vic and other British institutions, by the way, did get a life-saving reprieve from, from its government last week. One and a half billion pounds, I believe, in support. Hmm, can we imagine our government doing the same? If only. Also, and only through Wednesday, I suggest you go to Oregon Shakespeare Festival's site and stream its original play, The Copper Children. This is a true and harrowing and, yes, rather resonant tale, although it takes place in 1904. This one is also chock full of issues, including Catholic.
Catholicism, adoption, and the cruelty of borders. For lighter fare, head to Lincoln Center at home. Starting Friday, you can watch its production of Carousel, starring Kelly O'Hara and a fabulous supporting cast. That'll be available every Friday through the summer. But it is the MCC Theater Company that may be the home of the most anticipated event of this week, a live reading Thursday at 7 p.m. of a play called Good as New. Julianne Moore stars in this one, which is written and directed by the always interesting Peter Hedges. Now, there were a few things that I streamed after we last talked that are still likely available on YouTube or on the company's sites. One is Theater of Wars, Book of Job. That's dark stuff. Why is there light for the wretched, asks one character. You answer our wisdom with lies. Well, like so much else today, it feels like a comment about those at the top. At the top here is a riveting performance by Jeffrey Wright. And you can still catch, as thousands of others have, the latest Richard Nelson Apple family get-together. The clan's first reunion during the pandemic was a huge hit and thoroughly enjoyable. The sequel, entitled And So We Come Forth, is not as memorable, but still offers enough nuggets of humor and pathos to make the hour worth it. I listened to Gettysburg's address and broke into tears, notes one family member. They ask some pertinent questions here. What is left to learn from? What do you miss the most? What should be torn down? This is a public theater sponsor. I think the most recommendable, the line. Now, these are the actual words spoken by, by healthcare workers, including nurses, paramedics, and an ambulance driver as they battle COVID-19. All spoken by excellent and unadorned actors, Allison Pill, Jamie Sheridan, and Santino Fon. The piece, written by or co-created by Eric Jensen and Jessica Blank, is titled A Documentary Play, and so it is. You cannot be compassionate and empathetic unless you can touch someone, says one character. Well, they find ways. Now we are heroes, asks one sarcastically. I would vote yes. In all your training, there's no warm-up to that conversation, says another character telling rel- about telling relatives that they had lost a loved one. There's a lot of useful information here that will stand the test of time, I think, and may prove an important record. So overall, plenty to tune into during yet another week of this extended intermission. And finally, to end on a nice, hopeful note, sort of, young people who love theater are not giving up. Yes, of course, they are likely watching Hamilton over and over on Disney+. Plus. By the way, already viewed by more in one weekend than we'll ever see it on the stage. But I was touched to hear about the Hawaiian Children's Theater, which has created something called The Show Must Go Online. Its first one is called The Dental Hygienist and has generated great response, as well as grateful letters from the young performers who were part of it. This can be streamed through their site. And, well, who knows, Jill? It may be starting its long road from the tropics to Broadway. Well, that would be nice. It can come by canoe. No, not by by raft. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so, again, I, I'm, uh, I, I am interested in what entertainment is going to look like a couple years from now. And everybody is. Um, not Every- in a bad, no, not, not, not in a practical way, but just whether mm-hmm. we, you know, we have been in a very, uh, uh, uh grim, uh, dystopia. You, you, you know, the, 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 the more reviewed, uh, the, the, yeah. the less cheerful, the better reviewed in the last period of time. Going back to, I, I, I won't, I won't mention anything. So, um, sure. I am, Interested to see what beca- what what gets revived, what yeah. gets broadened, what gets reintroduced, not reimagined, reintroduced. I, I, the, and I wonder if the reimagining is going to be reoriented, etc. Simply because, yeah, be some, yeah, because of what we've gone through. Uh, I mean, I can't imagine anything original being written in the next year or two that doesn't refer to this period of time, whether it's television movies or theater i mean it you just sort of can't ignore it um 
But I, I agree. I don't know what theater is going to look like. Uh, hopefully next year Broadway will come back. Will 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 audiences go? Uh, have they, they gotten used? They will know, if they. I just 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 out of curiosity, I'm sure I'm, I'm sure that you are paying attention to the various uh, uh, things that come up along the way. And one of the most recent is ventilation. And I was going to ask you. Uh, whether you've heard anything yet about uh, ventilation systems in theaters and yeah. if um, mm-hmm. at the same time they'll do the ladies' bathrooms. Right, right. Very good point. Uh, yeah, well, they, we know they put in more of them, whether they'll ventilate them better. No, Listen, but- I just got off an airplane coming here, and that's the first question everybody asked me. How did you get on a plane? You know, what is the ventilation there is very good. Yeah, yeah, I heard a discussion once, and I think I talked about it here a couple of weeks ago among theater owners among uh, museum uh, curators and they're all talking about you know not only the the product that they're but about how they have to change their like you say you know the whole the, whether it's the bathrooms whether it's the air whether it's the seating but but some the- of it I I you know again and this leaves me um, standing here scratching my head uh, some some of these changes can certainly be improvements, and I've just marvel at the yeah, attitude that please. it's you know that it's it's a disaster because you could take any one of these things that is now being and, and no one likes some forced change. I mean, let's 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 be blunt, but um, you could complain about you know, pick pick a topic, any topic that we're being forced to change. Um, prior to this, you could get a list of complaints about I don't know. 20 at least 20 with your eyes closed it's sort of like family feud you know um about the the theater experience too expensive you know, pick a thing that th- i have friends who don't don't go because they say the seats are too uncomfortable it took nothing to do with the pandemic long before that they just they the seats are uncomfortable they're too close together um obviously the bathroom you know no, some of this maybe will lead to improvements in, in the actual facilities. And the bigger question is, well, of course, whether customers will pay prices and go back to, you know, we're getting so used to this. Will this kind of material still be available? You know, they've done a fantastic job, the theater community, of giving us this entertainment online. And hey, it gets pretty uh, it gets pretty comfortable, you know, sitting home watching the old Vic uh, on your computer, but um, right, I think you'll just have to pay for it more. Yeah, listen, things apparently are opening out where you are, opening out uh, uh, some of the in right the Berkshire. the Berkshires. Yep, different uh, uh, different uh, theater companies, Barrington Stage, and I think Berkshire Theater Group have That's performances right. That's outside. What I heard about. And of uh, and Sharon Playhouse did a marvelous thing, and this this started actually not started, but um, I sure you are aware of the various drive-by graduations and so forth and uh, drive-in movies. It just it was a hop, skip, and a jump to, hey, let's perform in a flatbed truck. Hey, we can do this. You know, just, just again, necessity is the mother of invention. So for the people who remember are sitting... The, remember circuses? <laughs> they would, the circuses would come to town. Exactly. And they'd unload their buses or whatever, their, you know, the trailers and the animals would come off and they'd put on a show. Right. Um uh, so you know, so, in, in, in a funny way, you may find a, um, a revival—no pun intended—of uh, road road work, road life, and bringing, yeah. getting the show on the road. And I'll tell you, money-wise, starting out in the shall we say provinces, may, maybe we can bring back the line: "Will it play in Peoria?" Yeah, exactly. I mean, one of the last articles I wrote, a very long article, which will never see the light of day was all about um, traveling, you know, national. And that was before the pandemic. It was just about the whole business of national shows, traveling, and how cost, how much money they bring in. Every Broadway show now has to have a traveling unit. All that's dead. You know, all that's dead right now. Um, you know, the band's visit is not going to be visiting. I mean, it, everyone has been canceled for the year. Yes. That is so much money lost. I mean, that's a whole other issue, you know, besides the entertainment. The money uh, lost and the rearranging that these companies are doing, you know. Again, I say the theater community has stepped up so beautifully, but boy, do they have challenges ahead. 
Stage Right or Not with Michelle Willens, produced in the studios of Robin Hood Radio, robinhoodradio.com.